Okay, um, there's just ourselves at the moment, so not too many, but uh, one, one person is fine. Um, so we're going to talk about introduction to 3D modeling. So what we're talking about here is how to come from a design idea, a drawing idea, into a 3D modeling workshop and actually work it in the software itself. Um, so the first question we ask is, what is 3D modeling? Uh, so as we want to look at this, we've got a little video just going to show you what a 3D modeling system is. I'm sorry? Yeah. So this is just an introduction to SOLIDWORKS and the whole process of the whole 3D modeling structure. So this is showcasing how you would go from an idea to a drawing to then a model and then a finished concept.
So that was, a, that was an overview of exactly what the kind of things that SOLIDWORKS can do for you. Now SOLIDWORKS is one of the programs we have in the DSL for 3D modeling. We have SOLIDWORKS, Creo, PTA Creo, and we also have AutoCAD 1, 2, 3, which are main ones, and then we have a version of Blender on there as well. But uh, what you just saw though was the ability to go through all of the steps in, in a commercial uh, environment for actually creating a product. So you start off with a concept scribbled on a piece of paper, you then do the 2D drawing in that, bring it in and then start modeling that out. You then use what we call assembly to take all the separate component parts and build them again in an assembly part. And from that, you can do simulations, you can do testing, you can actually do photo views, animations of the part before you actually build or 3D print or manufacture that particular part. So that's the basics of the functions of the SOLIDWORKS and the functions of the 3D modeling software. We need to understand some basics of 3D modeling before we can actually start building building our parts. So there are some fundamentals when we talk about 3D modeling, um, which we can actually see. So this is uh, the next section right, excuse me, right here. Okay, so what we're going to talk about in this particular section is an overview. We're going to talk about key modeling terminology. Um, Whenever you're doing 3D modeling, there are certain things you'll see terminology and text that comes up, and this is, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the available uh, modeling software, obviously what we have on our systems. We're going to talk about modeling and how we kind of bring that into 3D printing and utilize that here in the DSL. And we're actually then going to go into a live demo of SOLIDWORKS and actually go step by step and build a very small, simple part for that. And at the end, we're going to have some questions and answers, so you're more, more than welcome to ask any questions on that. So when we talk about modeling, terms. Uh, one of the first ones we call a polygon and anytime you look at graphic animation, um, uh, game making, 3D modeling, it's made up of little shapes and we call these shapes polygons and that's how it's made up as you go through that. So whenever you talk about a, a graphic engine it can handle 200,000 polygons a second and things like that, this is what we're actually talking about, the actual shapes that make up the objects that you're looking at. Now, some of the key terms you'll see there is faces. So every time we have a face, if you think of a cube, a cube has individual six faces on a cube. So that is the front surface of any kind of modeling. Now, you can have interior and exterior geometry, but generally they're all made up of different faces and different polygons as you go through. Uh, you have a vertex. Now, a vertex is the little corner where all of these corners, polygons, faces, they meet. It's almost like the, the corner of a square, so you've got four vertices on a square, and this is where they join together. If you hear the terminology that something isn't watertight, if you look at a 3D model and it says the model isn't watertight, it doesn't mean it can't hit, hold water, it means that these joints aren't connected. There's one of the vertices isn't connected properly, and that's what, why it's not watertight. And what happens in that instance, the 3D modeling software will say, well, I don't know what it is, and it just leaves a hole. It just leaves that piece uh, missing from that. The other terminology is edges. So we've got our vertices in the corners, and we've got our edges, which are the connecting lines between the vertices. So that's our triangles and shapes and squares, things like that. And it certainly helps uh, make sure everything is connected properly. Um, now, topology is the ability to mix all of these different shapes, these different polygons together, and give you the final rendered product. So you'd have triangles and squares and shapes, and it will cause those curves in your model. And as you can see on this model right here, uh, on the left-hand side is a rendered look. On the, on the right-hand side, you'll see all the different shapes and curves, and you can see where all the lines line up, where all the uh, polygons and everything are made to give you that particular shape. Uh, and that we call that topology in the model itself. Uh, triangles, now these are very important when 3D printing because 3D printing uses triangles primarily as a build source for what we call an STL file, which is the model file that we need for 3D printing. And it's a very simple way of making things larger and, and smaller. Some of the benefits to this is if you design a model, for instance, that's two inches tall, because it's made up of shapes, of polygon shapes, if you make it 50 feet tall, you won't lose the resolution like you do in, in photographs. It will always be really sharp and sized and things like that on there for you. Uh, the other th uh, terminology, extrusion. So we start off, if we imagine drawing a square uh, on a piece of paper and then you pull that square out, you extrude that square out to give you some depth and shape on that. And we're actually going to get an extrusion. We, we do that through different options in the SOLIDWORKS itself to allow us to pull out that information. Now we can extrude in as well. We can, we can cut by reverse extruding as well. 
Uh, now, a beveled edge is something slightly different. So if you look at the shape of this particular tabletop, instead of us having to carve all of that out individually, we create a beveled shape and then rotate that around a specific edge. So it gives us that shape all the way around the edge, and it's very good for contour. And if we want nice curves and things, we can create beveled shapes, sweep them around, or we can curve them out with contouring, and that will give us our beveling uh, as we go on there. Uh, now this is quite an important piece if you are doing game design or you're doing any kind of animation or testing software. When we talk about a pivot point, if you imagine that I have a, a, a pen, uh, for instance, right here. Now this pen, I want to turn around a specific point. So if I put the pivot point on the tip, it's going to pivot and move around that particular point. If I put it in the middle, it will move around that point. Now when we talk about square shapes, we can have a pivot point right here in the middle, or it's going to be all of the different ends. In a graphic design or a game design you want something to turn or if you've got a hinge or a, an angle on your actual 3D design it needs to turn around a specific point you can set that as the pivot point so it's actually going to move around that point in the animation and you can set that in your uh, animation and testing software that some things are fixed and some things are allowed to pivot but when we talk about that we're talking about a pivot point is the movable point in the 3D modeling. Uh, this is quite important, what we call normals. Uh, now again, we talked about faces. If you imagine a cube and you have the outside face is the thing you can physically touch. The inside of that face, you can't touch, it's on the inside, you can't see it. Sometimes, some software like Blender and things like that, you may accidentally reverse those. So what you think is the surface is actually being flipped around and is the reverse surface. So inside or backside. Uh, again, when you come to 3D printing, if you've got a reversed surface, Surface, the 3D printer software does, I don't know what that is, it's, it's not a front surface, so it ignores it. And again, you end up with a hole. So what you end up doing there is using special software that actually finds that and fixes that problem for you. And we'll talk about that as we go through. But we call that normals. If you've got inverse normals, then something's going to mess up wrong and you'll, it'll actually be the wrong way around. Uh, <clears throat> you will see that a lot if you're trying to add a texture or an image onto the surface of your 3D model. If your normals are reversed, it won't have the texture because it's not on the front side. It'll just show little holes where those are incorrect. Instances, this is more uh, realistically for game design or any kind of animation design. And what it means is if you're doing a model and you've got ho hundreds of thousands of, of uh, soldiers running around everywhere, you don't want to have to physically make every single one of those soldiers. You may make 20 different variations of that and then you will pretty much copy and paste those and each one of those becomes an instance of the original. So if you have a game design and you've got 400 soldiers and there's maybe 20 variations of that, if you make a change to one of the variations it will change all of the instances as well. So it's a way of manipulating uh, lots and lots of uh, different copies of something and just changing one feature which will change everything else to go with it for you. So we call those instances uh, from the original. You can't really change an instance, you, you're, only, you're actually in the original when you uh, when you do that. Uh, so this is some idea of some of the modeling software. You've got some basic fundamentals there for you, but these are all the different softwares available for 3D modeling. A lot of it's free, a lot of it's paid for. The main ones, as I say, we have here is things like Blender, SketchUp, SolidWorks, and AutoCAD we have in our systems here. Maya is more of a game design software. 3ds Max is more of a game design software. And then as you go through Inventor, Tinkercad, these are all individual kind of 3D modeling systems uh, that go from very young children can do from two three year old children all the way through to adults uh, and then you th see things like ZBrush uh, ZBrush is a digital clay modeling system so you work with tools like you would in clay modeling you carve away and but it's all on the computer and you create those beautiful looking clay models uh, with ZBrush on that so number of them out there you can start with things like Tinkercad um, Google SketchUp, they're easy ones to start off with, they're object model, they're very, very easy to play around with. Uh, I like SolidWorks, it's a great uh, software, it's available in all industries and it works really, really well with simulation, things like that. But you can try a lot more out there, you can find out different uh, options in the actual software as you go along there for you. 
Uh, now we'd start looking at individuals. So this is Tinkercad. Tinkercad is one of the basic softwares uh, that young children can use very easily. And you literally start with a shape. You drag a shape over and then you start pulling at that shape to make it different ways. So it's a very basic introduction. It will give you basic fundamental shapes and things like that. Uh, again, just good for having a quick look at. SolidWorks is the one that we're going to showcase today. So this is one of the commercial available uh, programs. And again, many, many, many features on that. We're going to cover the basics of SolidWorks today. Uh, as you get more into it, you can pull out different areas from that. One of the things I like to do is go to a company like McMaster Car as a parts supplier. You can order nuts and bolts and, and things like that. But they actually have online a SolidWorks model file that you can download and actually bring into SolidWorks. And one of the benefits of that is it's actually showed you every step that they went through to make that model so if you're not familiar with SOLIDWORKS or you want to learn how to do cuts and curves and and different things like that you can actually look at an existing model and go backwards through the steps and see how they actually did that and it shows that and it's a great way to, to actually bring in something quite complicated and learn how you would professionally model that one so we're going to take a look at SOLIDWORKS as we go through today other software, Google SketchUp. So this is a step up from Tinkercad. Uh, you're going to see a lot of this. They use a lot of this to put models on Google Earth and things like that. So it's mainly used a lot for big models, uh, architectural models, things like that. And there's a lot of resources out there, a lot of things you can download already, model parts you can drag and drop in there. Um, it's a little more complicated when you come out of this into 3D printing, but this is a great way if you want to design a building and put it on Google Earth or you want to put people, things like that. Uh, Google SketchUp can do that. There's a free version online that you're able to do that with. Creo is the second software that we teach on campus. Uh, this is a campus-wide software, so you'll find a lot of the engineering construction, they, they learn and teach Creo quite a bit. Uh, SolidWorks and Creo work very similarly, and they're very easy to kind of blend together and kind of work in the different softwares uh, to find out how you want to grow with that. What I would suggest is have a look at the different software that's out there and find what you feel more comfortable with. If it is your industry that you're moving into, then SolidWorks, Creo, or AutoCAD are probably the three best pieces of software for you to work with because they jump right into industry. A lot of the companies out there use those as part of their uh, modeling software. Now Blender is more of a wireframe type modeling software and this is used more in animation for graphics and games and things like that. So it's an easy software very similar to uh, Google SketchUp in the way that it works uh, but because it's wireframe you drag and drop polygons and things like that and you can stretch polygons and it's, it lends itself more to animation because you don't really work with solid models all the time you're working with surfaces a lot more than a solid model so you can you can make animated characters work very very quickly in Blender. We do have that on the computers if you, uh, you want to utilize that as well. Fusion is one of the newest softwares. This is part of the AutoCAD system and AutoCAD 123 and AutoCAD Design are all in there but Fusion 360 was a combination of different softwares that they've given out for students to get a free, uh, license for three years for free with this particular software and you can do 3D modeling with this software, you can do DXF files ready for CNC milling, it will do all the steps and the cut paths for CNC milling and it will also work with laser cutters and things like that so it's a combination package uh, very easy to use and again it's free for students for three years if you want to download that package called Fusion 360. Now when we talk about 3D modeling, some of the benefits of 3D modeling, uh, 3D printing is something we do a lot here in the DSL. And if you look at these particular shapes and look at, these were 3D modeled and then actually printed. And you can see the very complex, very unique shapes. And they would be almost impossible to manufacture in any other way than 3D printing. So what the 3D modeling for 3D printing gives you is this complete range of options when you're creating a model. There is no limitation really to the, the shape and size and dimensions it's only limited by the printer uh, how big the printer plate is the actual dimension uh, and the dynamics of that all the geography and all the kind of cuts and curves in that are all going to be based on your 3d model there is no limitation to do that in the 3d printing so you can create these very natural shapes uh, and certainly a lot of designers now in industry are actually designing buildings with all of this and they're taking nature and for once we're able to replicate nature without the limitation of construction and how we build it we can 3d print the same as nature does and, and print it that way and build it that way 
Uh, 3D modeling software, there's quite a lot. As I say, we've got GrabCab, we've got different software out there. Uh, we've got the main ones on our system, SolidWorks, Creo, uh, AutoCAD and Blender on there. Uh, there are also a lot of things called GrabCAD and uh, CAD files and things like that where you can actually download models that are already made. So you don't always have to build the model yourself. You don't have to start from scratch. Sometimes you can find parts of the component in it, like I was saying with um, <coughs> excuse me, MasterCar, where you can actually go online and pull the nuts and the bolts and plates, things that you're going to buy for your actual model anyway, and then you redesign everything else around that. So they're available. So things like GrabCAD and, and sites like this are available. You can sign and become a member and download files for motors and things that you know you're going to use in your actual models, and then you just design around that to work with that. So what we're going to do right now, we're actually going to jump into SOLIDWORKS and show you a demonstration of how it actually works. Um, so we've got SOLIDWORKS open on the right here. So what we're going to do, basically, if you look at SOLIDWORKS right here, this is the open screen you will get when you open up SOLIDWORKS. So the first thing we need to do to actually design a model, we need to open an actual page and say we need a new one. So right up here, we have a new option. So we create a new folder. And right here, we then get three options. Um, we get a, a part, an assembly, or a drawing. Now, we haven't created a part, so we can't assemble it and we can't make a drawing of it. So we're going to create a part using our part system. We click OK. So what we're now going to get is a flat screen here. Now, you have a number of different file managers. You've got different tool managers down here. You've got a bunch right here. You've also got top managers uh, right on the top there. So we're going to create a simple file by basically picking a plane. So if you look on here, we have to choose the plane to start from. So we're going to start from the top plane. Now if we right click on this, we're able to orientate that to look straight in front of us. So we're going to do that. So now we've got the, the plane directly in front of us. Now what we're going to do, we're going to create a little part. So let's create a cube first of all, just a regular square cube. So what we need to do is using our draw tool right here, we can choose what kind of drawing we want. We want to center Right here, I'm going to choose a center rectangle. So I can just pull that rectangle out. Yeah, so I've just drawn that. Now what I can do in that, I can actually get my, excuse me. If I now click on this, I want a specific size. So I can drag that size and create, oh, excuse me, create a model from that. Let me just step back from that, sorry. Okay, so what we're going to do, we need to actually tell it how big that is. So right here, we get the dimensions of that. So I can tell that to be 100 millimeters or 100 inches, depending on our settings. If you look down at the bottom here, we can tell it what we're actually going to work in. We've got a different um, setup for millimeters, inches, or so whichever. If you want to work in feet and inches, you can do that. If you want to work in millimeters or centimeters or meters, you can do that. So you've got all that setting here. So when you look at your sizes, it's going to give you those in that particular size. Uh, let me just look at what my. So once we've created that, we can click OK. We can do the same on the side. And again, we can say, okay, so that's, so now we have a square system. So what we need to do with our square, we then need, I'm just gonna pull this up a little bit, one second. So let me set my window a little bit better. And so we'll put my toolbox. Here. Where are we going? Okay. So I've lost my uh, the toolbox I'm looking for. So I can't quite see it from there. One second. Uh, where are we going? Um, so basically what we're going to do, we actually need to pull that out, so I can't quite see my 
system for me to see where I can see it. I'm a little bit farther away now, excuse me. Okay, so what we want to do, we're going to extrude that now. So we're going to go from our, from our drawing section, from, from the sketch where we've actually created the sketch, we now want to go into features and extrude that out. So two ways we can do that, we can literally draw it and pull it out if we wish, or we can give it a specific size. So if we tell that we want that to be 50, uh, now we can say millimeters, we can say inches, we can tell it the thing, but if we just hit the, that, that, that one, it is set in millimeters right now, so it's gonna fit in millimeters. So we've just created a square right now, we're gonna click okay. So right now what we've got is our box. So we've just drawn a square and pulled it out. Now it's on its own, it's quite plain. We want to do other things with that. So let's say we want to put something else on that. If we click on the top face and then again, we orientate that towards us, we can then use that face to build from. So if I then go back into my sketch and let's say we take a, a circle, just a standard circle. And again, I want to put a circle over here. I can draw a circle here. I can draw a circle. Now this will align you. If you're trying to keep things in a line, it will automatically align for you. So I can go a circle right here. And again, I can say, right, I'm happy with that. And I can change that size to fit whatever I want it to be right here. So if I want that it's a five, I can set that size. It's right there. And then this one we can click on, uh, excuse me. Uh, now one of the things you can do, so this is going to make, if I want to extrude these, I'm going to get rods pulling out of that. Now let's say I don't want a solid rod, let's say I go to the middle of this one and I create another circle. So what I'll get now when I go to, to model that in the features, do that because I've got intersect sorry I've got intersecting things here I'm just going to delete that cancel that out a second so again we're just going to go back to our draw so we we'll create a circle here now I'm going to create another circle within that circle like that and then a, a regular circle here so what I'm going to do now, when I actually create the extrusion on that, what I will get, as you can see, because I've created a circle within a circle, it gives me a tube system. It's an easy way to do that. Again, I'll stay at 50 millimeters, we'll go okay with that. Now, if I look at this first one and say, well, I want a hole. This is just a container, but this is going to be a hole. I'm going to click on this. Again, I'm going to set that. Sorry, just click this, okay. Uh, I'm going to select that face and bring it forward. Now I want to I want to cut a hole all the way through that. So again, what we do, we go to our sketch and go to our center and we draw a hole. So that's my hole. Now let's say I want that hole to be four millimeters, and uh, which is there. Now what I'm going to do is when I go to my features, I'm going to extrude cut. I'm going to cut it rather than extrude it. Now you can see, I can see the distance. Right now it's extruded down to what I've said before, 50 millimeters. I can drag it to extrude all the way down any way I want in that respect. Or I can do things like go through all, which will automatically go through all. If I go to next, it will go to a specific point on that, up to next or up to vertexes. So there's different ways that it will go through. Typically you'll cut all the way through if I want to go through everything and have now a whole to go all the way through that, yeah? Now let's say I want this to cut in like a little V-shape, so it cuts in like a little bowl. So one of the easiest ways to do that is I click on the circular edge that I want, and then we're gonna go into things like here, we've got fillets. So if I bring a fillet in, and I make that fillet say five millimeters, and click okay, what I will get is a nice fillet on that. So by adding a fillet, you're creating this nice smooth shape that's going through that. So now if I go, F-I-L-L-E-T, fillet. 
Now, if I want a different one where I want a sharp edge on that, so let's say we go to this one, or actually, let's go to, to this one, and I want the edge to come out sharp, like a, instead of being a curve, I want a nice sharp edge. We start looking at the concave section of that. Let me just go, uh, let's have a look. So I go to a chamfer section. So now, again, let's say we'll go a five millimeter chamfer on that. The chamfer now was a sharp, rather than a curve, it will chamfer out in that particular certain foyer. Now you can go even larger, you can go a chamfer, or if I want to fill it on this one, let's do a little fill it. And we're going to expand that to be 15. That gives it a nice, now where it comes up to an edge, it will cut that off. So you can kind of get different shapes in that foyer. Now, if I want to top on this, so let's say I want to go, say, so click on this surface. So I've created a little kind of void in there, but I want to put a little top on that. So I want that to be hollow in the middle so it doesn't use a lot of material, but I want to put a, a lid on it. The same thing again, we've highlighted the face that we're going to go on. We've, we've gone to bring it towards us. Let's do that again. Oh, sorry, just bring that around. Click on this. Highlight the face. So if we're going to bring and put an actual lid on that, we're going to draw a circle again. We're going to go in our center. We're going to bring out to the edge. Now what we've got to do, if we click OK with that, we can go to our uh, extrude base. Now with the extrude base, I can either come up or down. And again, I can bring this down to, let's say, two millimeters in thickness. Um, so that's two millimeters. So that's on top. So I don't want it on top. I want it to come down. So what you've got the option here is the direction. You can reverse the direction of where you're going to bring it in. And that will then bring it down. So when I go OK now, that's actually, so I keep the same height across here for the different modeling. Does that make sense? Any questions so far? Yeah. Uh huh. No, it's, it's a solid, it, it'll just blend that in. The fillets are a really good way. If you've got really sharp edges on small areas, by adding a little fillet in there, you increase the surface area between that layer. So for 3D printing, it makes it a little bit stronger part, or it just adds that really nice curve to something. You want aerodynamics. It's a quick way to put aerodynamics into something without having to calculate all the curvature and everything you need. And then you can change and play around with those actual settings whenever you're doing your simulations and things like that which works really well. Another question back when yeah. you created the, um, the, silk, the, the dome one, yeah. Uh-huh. And, and you created it for two circles. Did you fill in the, the, between the two? Did you have to do it automatically does that. that. So that by having the two circles, it will use those as the actual extrusion. Mm -hmm. And the, between those is a solid surface. So that will automatically do. Now, we can do things if you want. Um, for instance, if we go here and we take a drawing let's say we'll take a a bolt type cut so we're going to put a bolt now again we can rotate this around have it where we want it to be and have our bolt now we can change all of these angles to match our bolt based on the bolt that we're going to go in but again right now we're going to do a cut feature um, extruded cut and we're going to bring that in maybe three millimeters and click OK so now what we've done we cut a hole three millimeters into our system. Uh, I can put another hole in the center of that from our sketch point of view. And we'll put a little circle hole so we'll actually have the bolt hole on that. And again, we can go straight to a cut. And then again, we can tell it to cut through all on that. So now what we get is a complete cut through. And the, so, so I can put a bolt in there. Now this is used a lot with 3D printing where I want, I don't want to be, I, I don't want to have to hold a, a ratchet on this side to tighten that bolt up. So by creating the bolt void, you can slot the bolt right in and it actually grips to the, the plastic and you can tighten a nut up on the other side or a bolt on the other side. You can include threads. It's a little more complicated to get threads into there, but we can, we can look at that. So this is kind of general basics. The other thing you can do if you're looking at kind of individual or weird shapes, um, when you go to sketch, for instance, if you use some of the some of those spline systems, with a spline I can create a sketch that has this real weird curve on it, and then correct that spline back. 
So now when I do a cut, we're going to go through all. We've now got this curved cut. So you can create individual kind of weird shapes and patterns and things like that as you go through. Uh, as, you, as you're kind of wandering through there. So there's lots of different drawing techniques and build techniques to create software. You just got to remember, uh, if you're going to add something, it has to have a face to add it off from. So if we're turning around, I'm clicking on this face to then be able to draw off that face. So you've got to connect it with something within that. If you want to create another box, I can zoom all the way and say, right, I just want to create another box over here, and it will use this face uh, as an option in that. Now the other thing you can do, as I say, which is quite interesting, let me close this out. Right? So if we go online now, we've got a McMaster car, and as I explained before, uh, with McMaster car, bring this over here, uh, McMaster car is the ability um, to download parts. So if we go to McMaster Car, so let's say we have a model and we're going to put something in that. So let's go to nuts and bolts and we want one of these kind of unusual bolts. So let's take something like this one. So we can look at all the different designs and that's say the one we want and we're going to pick this particular size. So when we look at product detail on the McMaster Car, we then can see the drawing of that and we can actually download the SOLIDWORKS file. So we can bring that in. Now when I open that, that SOLIDWORKS file is right there. So now I can look on here and you'll see all of the different steps of how they went through making that. And you can see all the different components. So you can use an existing model to bring it in to go through all the steps and how did they make that, how did they chamfer it in, how did they do the curves and you can click on a particular part and it will kind of show you over here, you go through all the steps uh, as you're going through that. Let me just shrink that down a little bit. In SOLIDWORKS, Mark, is there a library of uh, a set of standard, let's say, threads? Yes. So within SOLIDWORKS itself, you have bolt sizes, thread sizes. Uh, one of the most important features of SOLIDWORKS is it has a material library. So if you're creating a bolt or you're creating something, you can say this is stainless steel, this is brass, this is plastic, and it knows all of the strengths, all of the, the and a workflow on that. So when you go into simulation and all that, it actually has the actual model. It'll give you the weight of the model that it's going to be when it's finished. It will give you the dimensions, everything else in that. So the materials are quite a strong part of SOLIDWORKS and the standard um, thread sizes, bolt sizes, cut sizes are all in there so when you start getting into the advanced section and you're creating all of these threads and things like that you can do that and you can actually take a thread like this and create a cut in a model to actually give you the threads for that bolt so you can use an existing model to cut into another model and they do that quite a bit with SOLIDWORKS and things like that that works out there. Uh, so that's the ability to bring in um, all of the different functions into SOLIDWORKS and showcase the different styles that you can do uh, in that. And then, yeah. It makes any difference if you select a material type on SOLIDWORKS instead of, for example, moving into ANSYS and making ANSYS. Um, yeah, because when you export from SOLIDWORKS, if you export the model file, for instance, it will have that all of that information in it. So ANSYS can do it. You can go into ANSYS and add models and add materials and things like that. But they've already got it in here, and you can actually get more out of this than you can from ANSYS. So it'll give you all the weights, all the, all the different structures, the material strengths. It has the stress factors and everything else in here as well. So when you run a simulation, uh, everything is included in that. With SOLIDWORKS, there are many, many output options. So you can bring file options to give you that already in place that you might drop into ANSYS and it's already in the SOLIDWORKS model or the file so you don't have to go through that setup process in ANSYS. So there's no default material uh, Well right now this is just defaulted to nothing so you can go into different materials uh, where's my material so um, so right now it's not specified so if I want to go into a material I can add a material setup on this uh, in my where are we on this one Uh, sorry, uh, we've got those my materials. So you can literally create different appearances, drag and drops from here. And, uh, here we go. 
so you can change different colors and textures so I can add a texture on that surface uh, a different color on that surface for instance you can just drag and drop different textures to that uh, and then you've got different appearances so these are all your different appearances for your graphic design so these are more about visual um, so I can have that to be a frosted glass for instance and it would look like a frosted glass or a clear glass in there and you can change viewpoints here as well um, with different setups in your viewpoints to different studio lights and then you'll get different kind of rectangles from that you can look at your materials on or off um, add textures different colors things like that in there and then the material itself I believe is on this one um, Sorry, all my menus have moved around a little bit. So I can sorry, I've lost my materials. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, to some degree, yeah, but materials are normally in, a, in an object. It's normally on down here. My system's all out at the moment. One second. Uh, you can always search for it as well. So you, you can look at your material dialogues. Um, so there's a great search menu and, and kind of work menu in SolidWorks. Um, so you can set up your difference in your dialog box. It tells you everything you can with your different materials and your properties. But it's usually just uh, it's usually up here. I'm sure why I haven't got it. Uh Where's my materials section gone? Yes, yeah, usually this is 2012 version of 15 is a little uh, different on that. Materials missing for some reason. Come on. Ah, there you go. Edit material. Um, so basically, sorry about that. I was just looking for that section. So now you've got all the different materials right here. So you click on your part, and literally you can say, right, I want to be alloy steel, and just drag it into your part, or you can click a specific function and apply that. So that now becomes steel or it becomes galvanized steel. Um, so you can select each section and then create that and say, right, that's going to be a specific part. In an assembly, so each of these parts would be individual. So you'd have a nut and a bolt and a, and a separate part. When you assemble the part, it keeps the materials for each of the part that you set. So this particular model right now is set for that material. So if I bring back in, um, let's close this one out again. We've got a master. Uh, and bring this one back in again. 
So in our materials, uh, right click and we edit material. So right now we can basically tell this bolt to be anything we want it to be. It could be anodized, it could be carbon fibers, it could be plastics. So let's say it's a polyester resin, it will then change that to a resin. So, but it will then know as you look at all these settings here, um, you can see all the different settings and all the different elasticities, things like that. We start looking at the metals again, uh, steel cold drawn. I'm sorry? You can edit it to some degree. Uh, you can edit the values, but normally these are pre-default set. So if you change that and edit that to a custom material, you then have to save that as a different specific custom material. So right now, these are all preset, but you can create and edit custom materials right here. So you can create a custom material, plastic for instance, um, and here's a custom plastic. So you can then go in and change all of these settings and values to based on the material that you're going to be using. That makes sense? And again, you're more advanced in the, in the 3D modeling at that point because when you start adding materials, you're starting to look at simulations and actual physical characteristics uh, that you're going to send it away to be manufactured or you're going to do it yourself. So that will give you some idea in, in where we're at. We're a little bit more advanced than we normally be from this particular program. Right now, we're just in basic modeling, but this will come more into uh, the, the higher advanced assemblies and things like that for you. It will, yeah. I mean, when you do an assembly, if you've got, for instance, a steel nut and bolt and a plastic component and a metal component, when you assemble them, all of those weights and structures are all in the assembly, so the assembly can tell you the total weight of all of that and the strength characteristics. If you've got, for instance, moving, moving pivot points in the assembly, which you can do, you can set something up on an assembly and tell it to lock or move, they will stay with that assembly. So when you go from your assembly into a simulation, uh, all of your movements and everything will be locked based on the assembly setups that you brought in there as well. Any other questions? Now the last thing is, um, which we get asked a lot, is how do we go from this to a 3D print? Um, so basically we have a model file here, we've got something that we like and we want to 3D print that. So how we go to 3D print, we're literally going to go, and we, you can, you've got to save as, uh, like this. So you would literally go save as, and then at the bottom here, you're going to tell it to be uh, an STL file. But as you can see, there are many, many different file formats that you can have in that. So STL is the format that we need for 3D printing. And some of the options on that, which are quite important, um, if you look at what we call the tolerance, now as you can see, this is quite round. It's nice and round. If I reduce the tolerance, it's going to go more flat face so there's there's not enough faces to give you that real round so it's given you that kind of weird looking face so by adding more deviation or adding more tolerance you create a smoother curve now it increases the file size but it's not a massive thing when you're doing 3d printing you can have a big file size but what we want is to save that and it will ask us do we want to save everything now you can see all the different phases we talked about the polygons and shapes you can see all of those if i say no to that so that's a high resolution uh, where the curves are going to be nice and clean and everything's going to be really good for 3d printing if i reduce that again and go back to the save as and then we go back into our options from an stl file If we reduce that tolerance, let's bring that right down and click OK. If you can see now, there's less faces, there's less tolerance, so it's not going to be as smooth, it's going to be more rigidly blocky. And you can see an example of that. Let me start, get something for you. So you can see an example of that between these two model parts. So this one's fairly smooth. You can see it's, it's got a nice curvature to it. There's not much on there. This one wasn't the same. So you can see the individual lines of where it's, it, it's kind of choppy on the curve. So the lower the resolution, you lose a lot of your curve. Uh, and that's really important if you're doing aerofoils or anything like that. That curve is really, really important. So you want that uh, definition and that uh, resolution to be in there. So that's really important to get that as part of the, uh, the package. 
And that pretty much covers our basics of 3D printing and 3D modeling uh, for 3D printing. Again, we've got tutorials online. If you go on our website to the library website and click on the uh, DSL, and then if you click on technology, in the technology you'll see a list of all the software and all the computers. And what we're doing is adding training sessions to that technology. So if you see it highlighted underneath, if you click on that, it will take you to a lesson or a training session on that particular software. And we're building those up all the time, all the way through. I'm always here. I'm here through the day. Uh, you can always come and see me if you've got a question on that. We can always point you in the right direction and make sure you guys are uh, up to speed with that. Any other questions? Um, for an assembly, yeah, you, you would have to, let me bring in a couple of pieces that are models. So let's say, let's keep this model. Um, so, no, we're not going to do that. So let's save this model on, onto our desktop, for instance. Yeah, I'm going to just drop on our desktop and just call it a bolt. So that's a part. So then we'll let's let's go into McMaster car and we'll find another another plate or something like that. And what we got here? Let's have a look. Um, for a hole of some description, a washer. Uh, let's look for a, a nut. Let's just take that for instance and we'll take one of these plain nuts. Uh, so I'll bring that particular nut in. Okay, so we're just going to save this as a part. And our desktop, let's call it a nut. Okay, so once we've done that, we've got a couple of different parts that we want to bring together. Uh, let's close this up, we don't need that. Okay, so now we're going to go into an assembly. So we're going to create a new assembly. Okay. Now in an assembly, we can look for our parts. So let's browse for our parts. We've got a bolt, we're gonna bring that in. And we just click one bolt. So then we're gonna insert another part, a component. And this existing part, and we're gonna browse for that. We're gonna create our nut. So we've got the two together, we can lock that. So what we've got now are two different pieces ready for assembly. Now, what we, we want to do is we want to make this face, we want this bolt to fit in the middle of here. So what we're going to do there, we're going to click basically the circle here on the outer, and then I'm going to click the circle here. And what we've got to do is mate those parts. Uh, was my, so we're going to go to mate, and then I'm going to click on the second circle. So that now lines those two parts up. So what I've done, I've mated the circle with the circle so it's in the center. Now if I want to then say, right, I want this all the way in, I click on the first one. Oops, excuse me, I'm going to click OK with that. Uh, so again, I'm going to mate, so what I'm going to do, we'll get edit. Oops, so I'm going to click on the first surface, and then we're going to mate that again. And then we're going to make that to this surface right here. So that now closes in. Now I can actually adjust that slightly if I wanted to. You can adjust the distance um, in that mate. And I click OK. So you can go into that structure. There's, so there's our mates. We've got different mates. So in that we can actually adjust some of the distance standard mates. And I can make that three millimeters. Let's see. Um, 
so I can tell it how far and how close and things like that. So when, when you're making component parts, you don't want it all the way in, you want it to be a certain distance. You can adjust all the mates uh, to that. And then sometimes the mates may be a swivel point. Uh, if I click OK on this now, I've got that set. So this will turn this way, but it will not, you won't be able to pull it out but I can turn around that mate. Because I've got a mate saying you're a specific distance here, it won't adjust that. But I haven't put a mate on the turning so I can adjust that screw. So if that was a, a plate or a, or a nut or something and you've got an adjustment there, it will allow it to move up and down. Um, if I delete this mate, for instance, uh, this one. Oh, sorry, let me bring that back in. Bring our nut back in. Okay, so we're going to set that again. So what I can do now is I say I can I can set the mate up. So we're going to go on this circle and we're going to set the mate to be the circle here. So all I've done there is set up a mate to say the circles need to stay together. So I'm not able to click on this and move it around away from this or anything like that. But I can move different components. I, um, I can move this uh, up and down or around. So now that can move freely because I haven't mated it. If I then mate this surface with this surface and set a distance, it won't allow me to move sideways then. So right now I can, I can, I can, I can spin around, I can spin the whole thing around, I can move this up and down, but it won't move off that circle, it wants to stay on that circle. It will only go in this direction, spin around and it will only go this way. Yeah, you can, you can set actions where it will only go one direction or another direction. As you say, well, it'll only move right or it'll only move left. And you can, you can say, I want to be stopped here and things like that. So that's all to do with where, you, if you put a bolt or an angle, if I put a bracket, for instance, with a, a, an angle like this, it will go 90 degrees out. I can tell it that this and this will make, but they'll stop as soon as they get to each other. So there are a lot of, so again, it's a little bit more advanced in this session, but there are a lot of functions you can put in for, for mating. And, and making different angles and pivot points and things like that, yeah.